Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Yesterday we picked up the lovely Massey Ferguson 65, which you can see behind me, and it was a long day. We started off taking scrap into Great Yarmouth, and then later on we went off to go and pick up the tractor. And it was a long day, I was very tired by the end of it, so we didn't get much time uh, yesterday to have a look at the Massey Ferguson 65. So today I've got plenty of time this morning. It needs filling up with fuel, it needs running, and we'll just take it around the yard and get acquainted with this lovely tractor. I think, you know, this is a tractor which is going to be a long-term keeper and it's also one which I would love in the future to restore. Um, I paid, I'll be transparent with you guys, I paid £3,900 for this tractor and I'm looking at spending between three to £5,000 on restoring it. And fully restored, the 65s can be worth between seven and a half to ten thousand pounds so the way I see it it's an investment it's also something which I enjoy for anybody out there who knows about Ollie's Farm I always enjoy classic tractors and modern tractors as well so it's it's following my passion but it just so happens to be an investment at the same time and it's something which we can use on the farm um, so if you just have a look here in the morning daylight it's looking quite like quite a good tractor we can see that the uh, the bonnets in original condition so are the back uh, mud guards um, but there are quite a few things on this which I've just been looking over this morning which will need replacing. The mudguard frames, they're actually in pretty good condition, but the mudguards themselves are not. They're going to need to be replaced because they've actually rotted at the bottom. Um, there isn't a top link, something else which I've noticed. So we've got mudguards and a top link which are going to have to be sourced. This is all original, the bonnet. Uh, it's completely genuine, even the grill, except this bottom piece is not original. It's a, it's a remake, so I'd love to replace that with an original part on the exhaust. It's got this clamp on here, I'm not too sure if that's original either. Um, but for the most part, the engine is as sweet as a nut. And thank you for your comments yesterday, we had a lot of comments, uh, positive comments, about the engine sound. So the engine sounds and runs pretty well at the moment. So we'll just start it up, we'll take it over to the fuel tank, put some fresh fuel in there this morning, and just run it for a bit and make sure that it's in good working order. Um, we might have to replace this grill here, that's going to be quite difficult to replace or mend for, for a restorer. So we might need a new grill as well. Something else I've noticed is that this strut here isn't the original strut. There used to be a foldable mechanism on these 65s and uh, when you lift up the bonnet, the mechanism would then straighten out. Somebody's fabricated this. Gonna have to get a new hose for the diesel tank. But at least we've got some diesel. <laughs> Quite interesting to see how they've changed over the years. It's nice putting fuel into a tractor without having to put any ad blue in it <laughs> for a change. Um, but yeah, God, haven't they changed? You know, this was like the main one of the main tractors back in the 1960s, and it could pull a five or six ton grain trailer, pull a three furrow plow, and do all of the main farm tasks on a modern day arable farm, which would have been back in the day you know, 150 to 300 acres, a nice sized mixed family farm. And we've gone from that to sort of, you know, the more modern 150 to 200 horsepower tractor now for the, for the family farm. This is what most people seem to be using nowadays uh, with beef and arable, uh, or, or they'll have a 6M or a New Holland T6 or something like that, or a Massey Ferguson 7 series. And just the physical size, I mean the 65 weighs 1.8 tonnes, this John Deere is about 7.5, 7, seven tonnes weighted up. I mean, <laughs> it's not, it's like, you know, tripled in size and has so much more horsepower and comforts than the old stuff. You know, you've got front suspension, cab suspension, 
um, ad blue, an ad blue system for the emissions so that the tractor's a lot more friendly, I guess, to the environment. That's what this dustbin is for on the side. And then you've got the cab suspension, also higher speed as well. You know, this, these can do 50 kilometers an hour on the road, whereas the little 65 would be more happy at doing maybe 18 or 20 miles an hour. Although with the multi-power, which this one has, has got the option for, but it hasn't got it fitted, They used to do 30 miles an hour with it, which is pretty cool. Um, so if anyone used to drive these back in the day, leave a comment. The gearbox seems to be fairly chilled out, put my foot on the clutch, high range. And we're going to reverse. I like these holders here where you can just put your feet and then the pedals behind you. It's quite a good idea if you're doing a long day's work in the field. The brakes are plumbing sharp as well, it's just had a new set actually, so the brakes are all good. We'll just open her up a little bit. Oh, we've got a hell of a lot of rooks over there this morning on the field. Here we go, we'll open her up a little bit. No blue smoke that I can see off just yet. Sounds good. I've been thinking about a plough for the 135 for a while, um, but actually it turns out the 65 will probably be the one to have the plough first. So I hear you can get a three furrow plough on these, so we might go for a three furrow Ferguson plough or a Ransom's plough and put that on the back of this. And then we'll have a two furrow plough for the 135 if that tractor ever goes ploughing when it's lovely and restored. In fact, that tractor will be coming home in the next six weeks for anyone who doesn't know. Um, so yeah, this is where we can do some demonstrations, some working demos. We can put the Ransom's plough on the back of this, or a Ferguson plough, whichever one we end up purchasing. But we'll just have to remember that we need the bottom bumper changing. We need replacement mud guards at the back. The bonnet just needs to be straightened out. Uh, it's not quite straight in places and there's a few dings and dents. And then that needs to be shot glass and powder coated. The rear rim, we need a new rim because that one's rotted out. So one new rim, two new mud guards, a top link a new bumper at the front, an original bumper. Won't be new, I'll try and get an original part. And then this tractor will be pretty good to go. Um, also as well, for the modern hydraulics on the log splitter I want to apply, we'll have to get a more modern coupling to attach onto this system here. It's currently got the older system on. Um, but other than that, we're pretty much set to go. It's also got a drawbar, which is gonna be quite handy for putting onto a small trailer, Fleming five-ton trailer, uh, because I've got some groundwork projects I wanna do around the farm. And in the future, I'd like to acquire a small digger, just a mini digger, um, and the 135 and 65 can share a small trailer for little projects and things like that at the weekend, which would be quite nice on a Sunday Sunday afternoon. Um, but yeah, I think it's been, you know, a fairly good acquisition. I was a bit worried, you know, it's a lot of money, you know, best part of 4,000 on a tractor. Um, you know, you hear, hear all sorts of stories out there, don't you, of broken, you know, you buy a tractor, you take it home, the engine blows up and there's cracks in uh, gearbox or in the engine, but I think this one will be all right. I think she'll be okay. It is one I'd love to do up as well at some point. Funnily enough, at the moment, I have got a bit of a soft spot for the Masseys. I know I'm a John Deere man. I do like my John Deere equipment, but I do like a lot of the classic Massey Ferguson's when they were built back at Banner Lane in Coventry, and they're just brilliant. I think that they're just so iconic. They were made at such a, an iconic time back in the swinging 60s. And, you know, you just don't get them like this anymore, unfortunately. 
I think in homage to some of the classic Massies, we'll have to try the new Massey Ferguson 8S. Um, and we've been thinking about a classic John Deere as well later down the line. Somebody commented and said a uh, John Deere 6630 would be a good classic to have. So maybe we'll look at a 6630 later down the line. A premium with uh, power quad. Uh, but for now, uh, I'm just really enjoying the 65 at the weekend. So I look forward to some ploughing demonstrations on here with the 135 and the 65 on this stubble. We've got some nettles here at the moment, but they'll soon plough in. Okay, thank you for watching today's video. I'm just going to take this for a spin, and I'll catch you in tomorrow's video when we're going to the Cove Hive ploughing match.